Mardu is my favorite color combo, and in the past few metagames, it really didn't feel like a good deck, so I kind of wrote it off again when this set released. But someone in my chat just mentioned, you know, why not? Why are you not trying Mardu Angels again? Like, people have nostalgia for me playing Angels. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just play, you know, I'll try it out. I'll play Angels. I did. It did all right. I mean, I got two wins, and then I was like, eh, I don't really feel like the deck is that good. But what I did see is a lot of potential. And most of that potential just came from the fact that this card right here is absolutely ridiculous. And I've been really searching for a spot for it outside of Esper because every time you think about the bat, you're thinking about you're thinking about Rafine, you're thinking about Schooner, and it felt like this card could basically only shine in that Esper deck, or maybe in Demir or any like mostly in Esper because you want Rafine really. But I've been digging deep, and when somebody mentioned Mardu, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. I was playing Giada, I was playing the Cavern Bat, and it felt good. I was cutting Giada, obviously, which is why it's no longer in the deck, but the Cavern Bat fixed every single issue that made Mardu so weak. And that was mostly the fact that Mardu just didn't have any way of interacting with your opponent's hand while keeping up, you know, with the proactive decks. You don't really want to play Duress because that's just a card that can be dead at, at some point in the game. You don't have that much card advantage in Mardu. Um, you really just have to play kind of proactively as well. And this, this Cavern Bat really allows you to do that. And it allows you to really keep up with the other decks that are really fast that also have access to counter magic so they don't fear those big spells. But now that you have the bat, well, you're in a position where you can take away those big spells and force a removal spell on the bat to potentially, you know, protect your other creatures like Sarah Paragon that can bring back the bat later down the line. If you don't know exactly what Sarah Paragon does since it hasn't seen that much play in Standard really in recent times, you just basically once per turn you get to bring back a land or a permanent spell that costs uh, three or less and when that permanent leaves the battlefield you gain two life and you exile it so you can't do it infinitely but there is a specific synergy with this card now that we're off the bat because the bat is obviously insane also let me just mention that lifelink is crazy on this card i don't love flying and lifelink both are insane it really may it turns this card into a threat whereas there were cards in the past that did similar things that you're just like ah, i can just leave that on the field but the bat if, especially if it grows, which it can with the not not efficiently in this deck, like eventually it can grow with the, the wedding announcement and the virtue of loyalty. Let's go back to Sarah Paragon, anyways. There is a synergy with Sarah Paragon that makes it so good, and that might make you want to play even more. I'm, I'm experimenting between you know playing a two two split of Paragon and Shield Red and potentially going up like three one or potentially four uh, zero, because this card is so good in this deck, allowing you to bring back Thorn. But specifically, Invasion of Gavacon. This card is absolutely bonkers with Sarah Paragon because you get to obviously cast this, disrupt your opponent's hand, flip it, and then it protects your creatures and it scales your creatures up with plus one plus one counters. The bat can especially leverage that again. So that's really important. And uh, also obviously the sacrifice where you you can sack it, hexproof and destructible on all your creatures. And the reason why that's so good is because with Sarah Paragon, if your opponent tries to remove something, you sack the Gabacon, you bring it back from the graveyard. But since this battle flips, you can do it infinitely because the exile uh, clause on this card only applies to the front side of Invasion of Gabacon. Once it's flipped, that exile clause no longer exists. So you basically have an infinite as long as your opponent never removes the Sarah Paragon. Every time they try to remove this, as long as they, yeah, as long as they don't have like two removal spells in one turn. You sack it, you bring it back, you attack with Paragon, which can exactly flip it. You know, three three counters on this, three damage here. Flip it, repeat. They can never, basically it's an infinite as long as your opponent doesn't have like a sweeper or something, or, sweep, or an exile sweeper, which we do have in standard, and those cards are really good against invasion. But there are still a lot of decks that just don't really have access to sweeper, especially not in the main deck. So that's Sarah Paragon, one of my favorite cards as well. Another card I'm testing, I only have one copy of this, but I, I feel like it's actually really good. Um, this card allows you to kind of hold your own against decks like Rafine and Schooner. You know, Schooner can't attack into this, and Rafine is a better card than this, obviously, but this is a, a single color card, so it fits into more decks. And it's really good here because if you're behind, you get to make more tokens you get to make one one white vampire tokens with lifelink and if you're ahead you get to draw so you push your advantage with the with the draw card if you're ahead on life 
And uh, if you're behind on life, you get to make a 1-1 one -one with lifelink, which is actually crazy when you have, you know, Virtue of Loyalty that can pump up those tokens, Wedding Announcement that can pump up those tokens. And that's a lot of, like, Anthem-type effects to leverage the go-wide kind of uh, effect of this card. I would actually maybe play another one if I had the card. If I own the card, I'd probably play, like, two or three. I'm not really sure what I would cut. Probably Steel Seraph. It would probably be in this slot. I don't know why I put this here, but Steel Seraph is insane. But in this deck, it's just like a potential life linker, basically. It doesn't the, the give flying to something isn't that relevant. This has flying. This is relevant, I guess, with the a, a bullet tile harvester. But you know, Steel Seraph is just good with Sarah Paragon. You can bring back the prototype cost of this, which is kind of insane. And just the fact that it is a potential vigilance creature and a potential lifelink creature is kind of crazy. And a potential late game threat. This card just does a lot. But it is a little bit more difficult to cast with a two white in a in a deck with no triome. So the preacher could be a good alternative if you do own the preacher and have less steel seraphs. Definitely go for it. Another card I want to mention before we move on to the sideboard real quick is Loran. I think Loran you should main deck it. There's way too many way too many hits right now, and uh, you can bring it back with Sarah Paragon again. Sarah Paragon is just a crazy card. It always has been. Hasn't really seen much play. I'm happy to play it here. Really. The sideboard there's not really that much to talk about. Just a bunch of like removal spells. One Lily for ramp. I'm not really sure if it's necessary though. I, maybe not. Two more invasions to go with the Sarah Paragon synergy and the overall disruption plan post board. Seismic Wave, probably my favorite, one of my favorite red removal spells ever, actually. I think this card is so well designed and so fun to play with. So it deals two to any target and then one to all non artifact creatures and opponent control. So it's like a mini sweeper tied to like a burst damage, three damage, basically. You can do three damage and then remove like, you know, Thalia's and like mono white small creatures it's so good and then last but not least we have squee which was uh, something i think one of my chatters um suggested and it is fantastic the reason it's fantastic is against control you play invasion turn two you play squee you flip the invasion and you go you go off you go off immediately like squee is so good against control and you need that haste creature as well but yeah i love this deck I'm so happy Marty's back. I'm going to be grinding this deck. This is going to be my... I'm probably... I'm going to make more videos on this because I really am excited to play this deck and I'm going to be playing it a lot. So if you like Mardu, that's good. And if you don't, well, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of it than you might want. But anyways, let's jump into it. Okay, cool. Wait, did I, um... Oh, yeah, I have more removal. Oh, whoa, wait. This is not a good matchup, is it? Uh, my deck is not fast, so <laughs> I don't think I can beat this. Is this my brew? Yeah, of course. Every Mardu deck is my brew. I own Mardu. Wait, what? Oh, they wanted the extra poison. Yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't make much sense. I mean, sure. If I don't have removal, that would have been a good play. But... Play this to destroy the uh, thing, right? Okay, this is a stable position, but it's not a very good one, though. Oh. Well. I forgot about this land. 
wonder if I had a better move than that then. Probably not though. This is not great. This plan is so good. Four, five. Hmm. Not quite dead yet. This was a really good draw. I would really appreciate it if I drew a land there, but no. Okay, at least I get rid of the roll this, which is fine. I don't really care about this. As long as this never leaves the battlefield, I think we're safe. Unless they have a bunch of buffs, which I don't... Don't know. A little bit scary. I can't believe I fixed my audio issues, that's so huge. Well, there's no blue, and then I, oh, I definitely need to take that. make sure they can't get this back ever. Alright, nice. Is my... No, my mug is not a crystal. This is a Hakuna Matata mug. The very old cup. It's not a mug, actually. It's a cup. It's a glass, not a cup. Cups are not made of glass, right? It was a mustard like container basically way back in the day i think actually i'm not even sure maybe that was just a glass that we bought i don't remember it's, it's too old how do i beat this you didn't see it you want to see it i don't know if you can see it Actually, no, this is the Disney. Yeah, it says Disney. So this was definitely a glass. I think I'm confusing it with something else. Oh, yeah, I know what I'm confusing it. I had, there's another thing that was the mustard thing. Yeah, I remember now. That was not it. Is this an artifact? Yes. Uh, does that mean I play... Well, I should definitely play Cut Down, right? They're going to play Wedding Announcement? Yeah, I should play this, yeah. I don't think Wedding Announcement is that good here. Actually, it's fine. No, it's fine, it's fine. Creates a bunch of blockers. It might be just Steel Seraph that's not great because they can pump the uh, thing too easily. 
think I'd rather just potentially have another, like, Loran or something. Gotta step up the glass game. Who gives a shit? <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, I'm just here to drink water, you know? I just take whatever glass is available. This is the only Disney glass that we own. X proof. It's not protection, so I can probably just play this. Or do I just play this? And if they have. If they have the 1 4. I think it's probably better to play. Mm. I think I want information actually. I don't know. I can't let them connect, otherwise this screws me over, right? I guess I can... no, no, I shouldn't wait. They have counter magic. I could do it upkeep, though. It's probably just better. Well, is it better to just cast this, though? Hmm. Because if this, if this gets countered, I'm just GG, right? I think I have to do this. I might, I might lose, though, because of this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Oh, that does. Oh, never mind. This is plus one. I forgot about that. No, no, I, I, I'm gonna lose the game. Oh wait, now they don't have. Actually, getting this down is so huge, though. Oh, I should have done this first. Oh, what? I'm. Oh my god. Okay, wait. Chill. It's okay. Everything's fine. Calm down. Interesting hand. Looks like I'm in a good spot. I love Seismic Wave, man. This is, this is... Actually... Is this good card design? I think so, but it's not very interesting. Not interesting enough to feature.
I don't know if playing that is a mistake or not. I don't know. It depends if I need this up or not. Probably not. Ah. Phase out. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't phase me out in combat. But I guess no, they yeah, they wanted to make sure they had a potential attack. Pretty sure this works because I mean I'll take this out I guess but this doesn't kill that oh it doesn't kill this either but I mean whatever that's useless because it doesn't do one damage to this anyways Didn't really matter, I only need to get through one blocker to win anyways. I definitely need to craft another man line, I think. Like, this deck can afford to play tap lines, I think. Somewhat. And <laughs> meet the system Rex for the brain chip, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh... Actually, my matchup into this isn't great. problem is I don't I, the only thing I have that's really good is Archangel of Wrath but I don't really have that many I guess Blood Tide Harvester is good too not horrible I mean it's better than than I think it is hey Jim Bob ugh I need a land. Well, that's good at least. I have to discard the invasion. Fine. Hey, you're saying. Can't you just use Citadel for three color decks that don't have Trium? Wait, what is Citadel? Is that a land? Because I need one right now. Add one mana of the chosen color, but it comes in tap, right? Yeah, no, it's not worth. Might as well just play more man lands. I don't need three color lands. Well, no, I need I need cards. That, I need lands that tap for multiple colors of mana most of the time. I guess I'll have to bounce this probably. Add two mana of the chosen color, spend this mana only to activate abilities. Of land sources, so only for man lands. I don't even have that many man lands.
If I find lands here, I'm I'm gonna pop off. Please. And channel lands? I don't have channel lands. <laughs> I have one channel land. But that's that's pretty neat, I guess. You know what else would be neat? If I didn't draw a four drop. When I need a land. I think I'm dead. If I'm being completely honest here. Oh, they're bouncing that? That's actually okay. Sure, they like th that's that's actually fine because it buys me more time. I thought they were going to bounce this and I'm kind of screwed because I have no blockers. And then all they have to do is like play this, activate, and I'm in a, a position where I have to block. So they, they made a really big misplay extending the game potentially. If I get land, so that's the problem. The, the if is the problem right now. I'm not playing Mardu Angels, I'm playing Mardu with like two angels. Please. Okay. Might still be better to play Blood Tide Harvester. And that. No, I need the lifelink, right? It's a lifelinker that's above the threshold for a Ganjo, so I need to play it. You know, they'll get multiple bunny corns, which is kind of annoying. But if I find lands here, I'm just gonna start popping off with like, start destroying everything. I can still double block it. They don't have legendaries, so they can't, can't use this. I can still double block easily. Oh, they're going in, okay. Interesting. Pretty good for me, I think. As long as I can't use that. I5 doesn't really matter. I don't think I want to lose my Paragon, right? I don't care about losing the Archangel, do I? also jump block but... I'm blocking wrong you think I should do I mean I could lose the Sarah Paragon which is maybe okay um, it's probably fine lose no two twos depends if I think I need the extra value which I might but we'll see I'll need to oh this goes down in stats okay you're right ah Oh yeah, this is a static. Yeah, okay, my bad. I have rarely played against this card. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter because I wouldn't have blocked that way if I felt like I didn't want to lose my thing. But But you're right. That is very important. And I will I will pay attention to that in the future. I yeah, there there haven't been many creatures that have like a static power level. 
a, a, um, a fluctuating power level depending on what's on the battlefield. Uh, toughness mostly, because Adeline exists, but yeah. at least not standard in a while. This card is so... This card is so close to being like a really well-designed land, actually. Like, I don't know why it gives plus one, plus one, no matter on attacker blocks. It's a little bit interesting. It should only give stats on attack. I might need to play like an actual hard sweeper for matchups like this because only having access to seismic wave is is probably okay, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna be that consistent. Maybe a third seismic wave I would be a little bit more confident. Also, I think I should definitely consider playing like one Elish Norn or what is the yeah, the five five mana. Preventing ETBs, I think, is really important in this matchup. Cut down, no cut down, maybe cut down. It's like cut down over Infernal Grass, but it's weird because against Bunny Cone, most of the time, they will definitely not be in cut down range, so... I don't really want to take that much damage. I might, I should play two probably, or maybe I play Destroy Evil. If they go into Wedding Announcement, is that okay? Probably gonna, they're gonna board in Destroy Evils, so maybe I just cut Shield in. Maybe I still want Invasion to like counteract potential interaction, but I'm not on the play. I would maybe do it on the play. I still need good blockers, that's the thing. So I guess I kind of have to keep shield running. This might be okay. I do have re extra removal because I'm playing Harvester and Archangel. What happened to go for the throat? <laughs> Gooner. Do I need another uh, black red? Actually, yeah, I might need multiple red sources. I think it's probably better. Or black, actually. Well, actually, that one, that was black, right? Yeah. All right, let's see how much work this can do. It's going to be an interesting wedding announcement matchup because uh, I don't really have an answer for it. Close board. I actually I could have reasonably boarded in at least destroy evil, if not Loran, because they also run that one one. I don't know if they're gonna keep it in though. My hand is good. I really needed to draw this card at some point. This is definitely one of my favorite removal spells ever printed, I think. I feel like killing that is the correct play when their only play turn with four mana, with three mana, was a two drop. 
They might be holding that knight. Errands. Also, they could be holding a Zephyr Sentinel as well. That's annoying. That's not annoying. Maybe their post board is just more non-creature heavy with like wedding announcements and destroy evils. Higher chance of breaking. Still unlucky, but... Eh, four cards isn't like super huge sample though. I like Bitter Triumph. I think Bitter Triumph is almost always worse than Infernal Grasp in this meta. Planeswalkers are just not really... There's too much aggression to play Planeswalkers. You don't want to take three. That one extra damage is massive as well. If they have Counterspell, I don't really care too much. Counterspell that makes a 1-1 one, one top deck Knight Errands. Tap 2, draw 2, drop. Channel end. I don't. Whatever they have that could interact with this, I don't care. Yeah. Cool. If you enjoy my content and would like to help me keep making it, consider supporting me over on Patreon, where you're gonna access a to a bunch of bonus videos as well as other rewards depending on the tiers. And thank you so much to all the lovely patrons that are already subscribed. I appreciate it very much. And I will see you all in the next video.